man on the planet, the UFC heavyweight title is on the line. Well, for a long time, he's been mentioned with the baddest men on the planet. For a long time, though, the title fight eluded him. Not anymore. Here he is, the number one heavyweight contender, finally making this walk and cracking a smile. He's waited a long time for this. He's not expecting a 25-minute war. He believes he has the power and the skills to get this thing done quickly. I guess we'll find out. Well, a lot of people think it's the most significant title in combat sports. No argument from me. Baddest man on the planet, UFC heavyweight champion. There he is in the flesh. What an absolute monster. What a title reign it has been. But a serious challenge in front of him here tonight. When this man became the heavyweight champion, a lot of people thought that this challenger was the one who would wrest the belt away. Now the fight is here. We'll see if we get a new champion or if this man continues one of the greatest heavyweight legacies the Octagon has ever seen. And now let's get you our tale of the tape for this heavyweight championship fight. Four years, the difference in age between these two fighters with big differences in height and reach. All right, now for the official introductions, we go inside the Octagon where we find Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. And now, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the Honda Center in Anaheim, California. And he Championship of the world. It's first. Fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer, holding a professional record of 31 wins, eight losses. He stands five feet seven inches tall, weighing in at 135 pounds. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting the challenger, Jose Aldo. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a wrestler, holding a professional record of five wins, three losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Fighting out of Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending USC heavyweight champion of the world, All right, this is for the championship. You've been given your instructions in the dressing room. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions. You will have a clean fight. Touch gloves. Let's make it official. So here we go, this highly anticipated fight is now underway. Looks like a classic matchup of striker versus grappler. Am I simplifying things too much? In this instance, you aren't, because this is what got these two men to the show. One guy is known for his diverse attack on the feet. The other guy is known for his ability to drag the fight to the mat and put his opponents in danger from the very start of the grappling exchange. Oh, really exploiting his reach advantage as he landed the jab there, DC. That's a nice strike. Oh, a combination lands. You want to talk about putting strikes together. Beautiful execution. And every one of them are landing. He's overwhelming him 
with different attacks. Oh, he missed with that right hand. Man. Oh, he might be out. So holding on to him here. Now. This is exactly what he needed to get a takedown and secure the position. Big punch lands over the top. Oh, how's he gonna call it? He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. The fighter on top needs to be trying to gain posture to throw ground and pound and then move to the next position. But if you're on the bottom, you've got to build a shield. Try to push your opponent off to try to get back to your feet. Well, he's up, but oh, is he hurt. 90 seconds to go. Back to the left hand now. Strike landed there by Aldo. One minute to go. Oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Well, straight right hand has been a good weapon for him. He misses with it there. Oh, now gets an underhook to get a more dominant position. Left hand punch with the clinch. Oh, big knee. Final seconds of round one. Nice defense. So a strong five minutes down. All right, so there's the horn signifying the end of the round. We had a knockdown there, but not a knockout. No, it wasn't a knockout, but you can't take those shots. That big punch landed, and it sat him down. If he gets hit with another one of those, it might be good night, Irene. situation with this fighter you're potentially playing with fire all right dominant position here he's got the full mount a lot of different ways he can go here maybe try to find an arm bar just get the ground and pound he can attack submission but those submissions will present themselves once he is landing that brutal ground and pound he is known for because then his opponent will start to get a little bit desperate to get out from under him which will then in turn leave arms dangling or he'll turn to his knees and get choked out well, these are some excellent ground and pound strikes here, DC. There's an efficiency with which he operates in these situations. He knows exactly when to throw, exactly when to hold, and it's allowing him to really control the grappling aspect of the fight. There's a song there, right? Know when to hold him, know when, when to hold him. Yep, there you absolutely. Go. Oh, man. This ground and pound is good. Probably my favorite striking realm in MMA, and he's as good as it gets. The problem is his opponent is not controlling his posture. He's allowing his opponent to get up, and when he does, he creates this. Oh, now trying to isolate an arm, DC. He needs to move his hips back to cover. He cannot allow him on that angle. Attack an arm bar. Continuing to try to manipulate the head here. Not tapping out 
tonight. All right, side control now, DC. When you get side control in a fight, what are you doing? When I get to the side control in the fight, and I believe this young man should do the same thing, it's secure first. Grab everything in tight. Make sure your elbows are in. Make sure you've got something locked in so your opponent doesn't just squirm away. Punch short punches, but try to make the opponent make a choice. Either he turns back into you, you take your front head lock, or he turns in the opposite direction, you throw your hook in, and you start looking to get a choke off. While right, working inside the closed guard now. Aldo gets up, he is back on the feet here. I mean, that right hand landing squared. Why don't we now take a look back at some of the highlights from that last round, DC? A lot for the replay guys to choose. I mean, these guys are going to be very busy trying to find what replay to show you guys. Lands on both sides of the octagon. Both guys fought great. What a phenomenal round. Here we go, third round of this championship fight. Nice loop of punch. There's no give on that leg kick. If your opponent has to get the clinch, pull it down on your head, land the punch after punch, you have got to clear that collar tie, reach back inside, and try to find space. Closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Nice take down there. Oh! Oh, beautiful counter there as he gains the side mount and trying to get out of this guillotine by potentially attempting a Von Flu. Wow. Done, absolutely. He finishes his opponent by way of submission. Right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission, though. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to trick people into going to the floor with him that puts them in danger and finishing fights. So there he is, the baddest man on the planet, UFC heavyweight champion of the world, a title that every heavyweight wants. He has it after the win by submission here tonight. He leaned on the grappling, and he got the job done in a big way. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is going to stop this contest at 1 minute, 36 seconds of round number three. Declaring the winner by tap out. And still.